So here's the micro mining uh, sluice, shaking sluice, or whatever I would call it. It it has the same uh, idea as a lot of stuff I build. It's on these flexor springs, and there's a motor, and the motor shakes the table back and forth, and I can shake it up to about uh, seven hertz. This is placer gold of various sizes. And this is a 100 mesh screen. And I want to get out, uh, you know, I'd love to get 100 milligrams of 100 mesh minus. I don't know if there's any in here or not, to tell you the truth. I'm not sure what's in this because I've never tried to measure it. So I'm using the 100 mesh screen just to screen whatever comes through. <laughs> what came through is all of the black powder, black uh, sand. Okay, so the gold is actually bigger than, most of the gold is bigger than 100 mesh. I'll take a look at this with my microscope. Here's the magnifier. So if you haven't seen this uh, in a previous video, I covered it in some detail. So here's what the 100 mesh minus gold looks like. So I was going to weigh it to see how much I recovered, but obviously that is going to be a problem. So the pattern that you see here, I'm still working on it, but this is working pretty well. I, I might add some more chevrons here. They terminate here. So these chevrons terminate here, and these lines are just sort of protection. Some of the gold will go into the first couple of grooves, and then uh, hopefully nothing gets down into here. So there's a battery power supply that runs the pump and the shaker. There's uh, a tub of water. There's another tub of water that catches the tailings so that I can run them through over and over again if I want to. The water comes out of here. This pipe is just, this is nice because it distributes the water flow evenly. I don't even know exactly why it works, but it does. And um, this prevents splashing and the tailings go out there and into the tub. So it's a closed circuit system. I have a bucket of uh, crushed sand. This, I crushed it using <laughs> A stamp mill that I'm developing. It's um, any, nowhere near finished. In fact, it's got plenty of defects. I'll show it to you in a sec, but this is the crush. This passed through a 30 mesh screen. So here's the stamp mill. It's a work in progress. Right now, only I can only get one stamp, one hammer to work at a time. Uh, there's a lot of mechanical issues with driving the, eh, lots of stuff. I'll cover this, uh, if I get it to work, I'll cover this in other videos. It's a very interesting machine. And I think it's got a lot of potential. So, here's the gold again that I just weighed out in that black sand and I'm going to put it all into here like that and there it is and it's uh, as usual it's uh, floating on the surface the gold almost all the gold is like floating on the surface so I'm going to go get some jet dry having jet dry in the water is uh, extremely important So our little tiny bit of gold is buried in this kilogram of uh, crushed ore.
took me about uh, two minutes to go through a kilogram of um, the crushed ore. So it was a continuous process. I could probably, I'm guessing with this tiny little table, I could run 50 kilograms per hour. You know, if I were at the beach or something where I had a continuous uh, flow of material. Now, here's the fun part. We're gonna try to clean this up and find the gold. I'm gonna snuffer up these uh, top grooves, the chevron grooves, and I'll show you what we do with it. Lots of black sand caught in the first groove. You can consider the bottom three or four grooves as kind of safety grooves so that we don't lose anything valuable. All right, so now we're gonna to go to step number two. These are Pyrex watch glasses for you know, beakers when you want to reflux. Um, and uh, it turns out they're really, really convenient for the next step. So I pop the tube out. Oh man, I can see very fine gold in there. <laughs> All right, more careful. So I cleaned the tube out pretty well. All right, now the snuffer bottle, just turn it upside down, shake it, and we're gonna plop it out, all that junk. Try not to lose any of it. And here's the cool thing about the this Pyrex. Uh, it's got the right curvature to it. You can use it as a miniature batea pan. Now, we're just going to shake this back down and we're going to swirl. Actually, swirling is better. As you can see, I'm still figuring this out, but swirling works really well. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to snuffer up the rest of that water. Get rid of it without disturbing the uh, material at all. That's important. Yeah, so here's the fun part. You can just turn it upside down <laughs> and you can look for the gold. And we'll bring this up here. Yeah. And there's the gold. It's nice, it's kind of magic. So again, here's the magnifier. It clips onto my cell phone case and we can take video. And there's all the gold. The really, really fine gold is now easy to see right through the bottom of the Pyrex uh, watch glass. Most of the water get out of it. Let's find out what we got. And there's a few gold particles in there, as expected, but much less than in the um, chevron. The ends of the chevron, I think, pick up most of it. And finally, here's what's, what was in the last four grooves combined. So, there's a, a bit, but it's not too much. I wish I had actually just done the last groove. I'm going to have to try that. 
Here's the tailings from yesterday. I'm going to run them on the table again to see what we lost. So there we have uh, the second pass. This is the tailings. And I'll clean it the same way. So there's a look at the gold that we lost um, in the tailings the first time. I'd say it's... Um, maybe 10% of the total.